Welcome to Personal Help Desk for Outlook. In this demonstration, we will explore on how to install, configure, and administer Personal Help Desk in Outlook. To install Personal Help Desk, let us shut down Outlook. And then run the setup executable file, which I have downloaded from the product website earlier. Note that requirements of Outlook and .NET Framework Here, I can select which one of these languages is to be used for the personal help desk folders, forms, and views in Outlook. For this demonstration, I will continue with the English forms and views. I will use the default installation folder, which is under the Program Files folder. Now we are done with the files extraction and installation. Let us start Outlook. Now I have a choice between creating a new personal help desk folders in Exchange or to use an existing personal help desk folders that were configured earlier. As I don't have any earlier configuration, I will choose the first option. This would allow me to copy a personal help desk folder to a folder location in Outlook. This folder can be an exchange public folder, or a shared mailbox folder, or can just be a simple PSD folder. For this demonstration, I will place the personal help desk folder under my primary mailbox. To get started, and for a quick evaluation of personal help desk, I will generate demo settings data and support cases samples. In Outlook 2010, you would find the Personal Help Desk Manager menu in the backstage view. This serves as the gateway for launching most of the functionalities and administrative tools available in Personal Help Desk for Outlook. Here, you can customize the contents of various drop down fields, modify email templates, enable automation, and other advanced features. Let us look at the technicians list. Here, you can change and update your email address, hourly rate, and contact details. This is the callers list and contains the detail of every caller that had requested or will request for support. The caller's email address is a mandatory and should be unique for each caller in this list. If there has to be phone calls to callers from within personal help desk, the telephone and mobile number need to be filled up. The mobile number is also necessary if callers have to receive SMS notifications in their mobile device. Each caller can be assigned to a department or category in this column. And using the hourly rate of the assigned department, Personal Help Desk can then use it as one of the possible rate for calculating cost and supporting and resolving the problem. If you already have contact details of the callers in the Exchange Global Address List or in any Outlook address book, you can use this Import button to extract the contacts detail, which would be then automatically filled in this grid. Let us now explore the Problems List. This list is a multi-tiered arrangement of categories and types. Each category can have a list of types. The first step in compiling a problems list is to gather the problem areas that your support staffs will be attending to. The problem areas are then feed into this category field. You can also specify the default hourly rate for each problem category so that, when using statistics, you can consider this category rate for calculating cost besides the technician's hourly rate and caller department's rate. The second step is to define the problem types for each problem category. For example, I can add a new type, Office 2010, and I will select Applications as the category. 
the default time is the duration in minutes, that is assumed, will be required to resolve the particular problem. If you does not enter any time spent, and marks a case as completed or resolved, personal help desk will automatically assign this default time on the basis of the problem type of the case. Each problem type can also be associated with a service level agreement from this drop down. The idea is to allow you to assign the relevant service level agreement to a support case on the basis of the problem area. Let us take an example with this support case item in the ongoing cases subfolder. Here, supposing you had chosen this support case to belongs to applications problem category and office 2010 problem type. Doing so, the default SLA check option would be enabled. And if you can check it, you can set the SLA associated with the problem to this case. Now, let us take a quick look at the assets list. In an organization, an asset can be a network workstation, a printer, keyboard, or any IT resource which needs maintenance and support over a period of time. Due to this, the help desk is a vital part of the company to get the most out of its IT assets. Personal Help Desk supports maintaining an assets list, which is basically a metadata bank comprising of certain information on a particular asset, such as brand, OS, model number, barcode, etc. For this demonstration, I have defined an asset list comprising of computer nodes, printers, and photocopiers, which are used in the organization. Depending on the type of assets and use, I can customize the titles of these asset fields. As you can see, this list takes to drop down fields, the values of which can be compiled here. I have designated the second field as type of asset, the third as the operating system, and the fourth as IP address, which is a static value, and the last field, which stores the make of the asset. So, with this information available in the help desk, you can use it to associate a support request submitted from end users. This makes it easier to track and pinpoint the source of the problem. Another advantage is, technician can look up for past history on that particular asset and easily seek patterns to the problem and learn how earlier issues were fixed. Now, to custom fields. Personal Help Desk supports up to four custom fields in the support case form in Outlook. You can use these fields to feed additional information on the caller, case, or on the problem itself. Now, with this setup, you are ready to generate and start working on support cases in Outlook. This concludes this video tutorial on configuring administrative settings in Personal Help Desk for Outlook.